what are some signs that you might be a bad friend? He said like, I have enough and then he just walk off. It low-key sounds manipulative. Can you recognize that the hurt is just a part of this process? Guys, I think we shouldn't talk about this already. Do you also have friends that yuck your yum? <laughs> this is your daily catch-up. I think at some point in our lives now, we've either experienced making friends that turns out aren't really good for us, and we've also probably at times been a bad friend to other people. Mm. So I think today's episode, we want to explore what are some signs that you are, this person might be a bad friend for you, or, or you, you might be a bad, bad friend, friend, and then how do we fix that? And maybe even like, how do we establish boundaries with friends or so? On TikTok, right, there's this famous theory that was buzzing for a while that is called the seven friend theory. Okay. Ooh. So essentially, okay, let me read out the list. So the different types of friends that you have, essentially they will match different parts of your social needs. Yeah. Right? Mm, number one, a friend you've had since you were little. Huh? Number Out. two, a friend that can make you laugh in any situation. A friend that can go on forever without talking to and nothing changes. A friend you can tell anything to. A friend that's like a sister or a brother. Can can't he actually be my brother? <laughs> you can. You want oh, okay, it to be. A friend you can't imagine not being friends with. Oh, that sounds so like sweet. a best friend. <laughs> and then a friend that knows all your relationship problems, even though, even though they probably don't want to hear about it. These were not the categories I was expecting. <laughs> yeah. I expected them to be a bit more So it's not general. so much segmented by like uh, what you go to this friend for. Yeah. It's like what I think what stage in your life, right, you made this friend, then I think that probably anchors quite a bit of your friendship. Each like each for maybe for the first few, but when you actually ran through the list, do you all have the seven slots filled? No, that's the thing. I, I have kind of like burned the bridge with all my <laughs> childhood friends already. Eh? You are the shitty oh. friend. Huh? Oh. Pretty, pretty much. Out of the seven, how many do you have right now? Okay, like, how many do you, you have? See the list. Eight, yeah, thank you. Or are they all your partner? No la, No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 Six out of seven. The okay, one. Uh, so okay lah. Yeah lah. La. Like, Which is the one that you don't have? Uh, a, a friend I've had since I was little. <laughs> I, I so think that's normal A childhood la. friend though, yeah. I mean- But I can see why that friendship is precious. Something good to have, not no, needed. you don't- oh. I think for the most part of my life, right? All my friends are just- We are only close during certain phases of- During that phase of my life. Mm. After mm. that, right? My problem is that- I don't know how to keep friends. And I feel like that is the part that makes me a bad friend. Because throughout the relationship also, it's like, yeah, we can do everything together. We can hang out. Right? But I realized that actually, I'm not reaching a certain level of depth with these people. And then, and that's why there's just some form of detachment. And it's because I never learned the second half. Which, which is? I wasn't willing to be vulnerable with these people and properly open up. And so I believe they also maybe, either they tried to be vulnerable at times, but they just... Could, I, I didn't reach out to, to, to meet in the middle mm -hmm. or, or they just didn't feel comfortable because I also wasn't being vulnerable. Only like in the recent years have I actually started to really value and understand like what a meaningful friendship looks like. Yeah, so that's why I felt like today's episode might be quite interesting for us to properly understand that so that hopefully people can identify this as early as possible and if there are certain friendships that they really value, certain people in their lives that they really value at this moment, right? hopefully they can they can work on it and make it something that's healthy and can last them a lifetime kind of. Well, I think that's a lesson like, I had to learn the hard ways. Yeah? Because like, I remember back in the time when I was kind of, uh, you know, like looking for love and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> I would only like share and kind of overshare to my friends. So whenever we met up, right, all I would do is like kind of emotionally dump all my problems. And then I think that eventually led to them uh, actually walking out on me. Right. Like oh, during wow. an actual meeting. Oh, literally. Like, he, said, like, he said like, I have enough and then he just walk off uh, and then I never talked to him again and this guy I co would consider at that point in time right was like one of my best friends what I actually found when researching this episode right is this thing called the social penetration the theory so the process involves self-disclosure which can help build trust and intimacy so just make sure you balance talking about yourself with listening with your friends so I think what I was doing then right is that I was just talking but not listening Okay. And like I wasn't giving them opportunities to talk about themselves. Yeah. And so I think mm. from now on, right? I think I'm, I'm a, thanks to that experience, I now listen a lot more la, yeah. compared to like just bleh. I actually have a technique for this because I was also going through something mm. like that earlier on in my life, right? Every time you leave a, a hangout session, right? Write down no. what you remember other Review. people saying. Do you remember what other people say or not? What did Shams talk about? 
What did Jared talk about? What did Denise talk about? If you can't remember, right, means you were not listening and you're just talking about yourself the entire time. Oh, is it so it's a self check, like ah, whether or not you're to listening. check whether I am listening to other people and there was a balanced conversation or not. But if you were not, eh, then how? Then, then you better you check <laughs> yourself. <laughs> la. Like now it's too late already, the meeting end, ma, then the next meeting is six months in time. It's in six months' time. No, but okay, so for example, Follow after up. that self check, right, very, which uh. you can do very quickly by yourself after the, the gathering or meeting or whatever, right? Possibly apologize, law. Hey, oh. maybe just now I, I was talking too much about myself, right? And maybe like I wasn't listening to you guys and all that. Sorry. Maybe the next time round we can meet meet up again soon or whatever. So I can really listen to you guys and what, what your catch up with y'all properly. La. You know what I mean? I'm not saying every time you might be like that. Mm. But there may be times where you just it slips up. Because we are we are always stuck in our own heads, right? So maybe we are a bit overwhelmed, but people cannot see that. Ma. Mm. So there may be tendencies for this to happen. But so far, everything that we've said, right, is constantly healthy communication mm. with you also you, you say he's your best friend mm. the fact that he stormed out that way right, on you uh, means that you were probably not listening to him or he wasn't communicating to you one or the other mm. right mm. because if he was having this build up frustration right of of you just constantly dumping this on, on, on him and all that kind of thing right or maybe he doesn't feel connection or he doesn't feel heard or listened to would he not have articulated it to you in various forms prior before it builds up to this point so if he didn't then then he needs to level up on communication you need to level up on asking him mm. right or if it's the other way around maybe he did communicate but you just weren't listening maybe yeah. I have a question wow. how do you know if you are the bad friend or if that your friend is a bad friend in that situation no both do something wrong right, in his specific situation mm, like a lack of calling out which I think is actually a sign of a good friend a friend who is willing to call you out on like your shitty behaviour. So your friend didn't lah, you're saying? No lah, never lah. And I think that's oh. very common in like, not just friendships, but relationships also, like romantic relationships. Yeah. I think we generally as a society feel like, don't call each other out until it's too late, until it reaches a boiling point. Mm. Yeah, and that's something we can th- like all improve on. Yeah, uh. I think the reason why I ask is that um, I feel like we sometimes default to say, my friend don't like storm off the conversation, right? During mid conversation, I will default to like, eh, this person bad friend, like, he don't listen to me. Wait, you all had friends that storm out during <laughs> no, no, our conversation. No, no, no. That's crazy. Dude, no, this no, is Dan's story. Dan's story. He also storm out. No, he threw no, the cake. They yeah. both go outside settle. Eh. No, That's true. but he threw the cake and people only saw him throw the cake. They didn't see the oh, before part. Oh. Mm. So similar to this situation, they only see the storming, but they never see what happened before. Yeah, on the mm. surface, the person who storms out looks like the asshole. Yeah. But... Takes two hands to slap, lah, guys. <laughs> With her, yeah. I mean, One okay, hand. it depends. Actually, yeah. you know something that I read that was a bit scary is that apparently to form a close friend, right, you need to have... You need to fulfill the 11, 3, 6 rule. Oh, sorry? Too so many numbers. Oh, Just now 7 now become 3, now become how many? Sorry, I love math. 3, 6, 2. 11, 3, 6. 11, 3, oh. 6, 2. Can buy 40, yeah. <laughs> okay, then. With a close friend, right, you need to maintain 11 meetings of long, at least 3 hours per meeting in the span of 6 months. Ah, okay. How did I fail for everything? Really? Uh, then you got no close friends. Okay, okay. 11 meetings in six months. Oh, then One month how many of them must be three hours? Per all meeting. All of them. All 11 must be three hours. Minimum of three hours. That's so 33 three hours. Th- yeah, 33 hours divided by six months. Yeah, hey, yeah, you yeah. <laughs> That's too much love. <laughs> so about one hour plus. Technically, it's one and uh, one third day. Uh. Spend with a friend. Oh. Okay lah. Whenever I meet my, meet like my close friend, right, it's always three hours long, uh, minimum. No, but, for sure. But not 11 times. Wow, That's wow. almost twice a month eh. It's true. Almost. Wow, 11, 11 meetings I cannot. Does that make us all close friends? No, we are work friends. We are different, friends by different. proximity. Yeah, yeah 11, by circumstance. 11 but meetings. Convenience. Give me not even half the month. Hey, ideation already. meeting not considered a meeting, okay? <laughs> Our barbecue, we try to plan for how long already? <laughs> 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 and we want to discuss we're, we're organic summer barbecue. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Do you want me to lend you one finger? Do you all meet your <laughs> <laughs> Do you all meet your close friends twice a month? The closest ones. The fighting of no, your five closest even, friends. And yeah. Off the top of my head, I can tell you already, I do not meet them. I meet them once every three months. Oh, mine was at two months better. Uh, around there. <laughs> I think that's safer. Yeah. Sure. Oh, safer. <laughs> two, uh, two to three months. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm. Why? Uh? Why do you think that is? Because we are busy. Because everyone's working. With, like, <laughs> jobs and responsibilities <laughs> and partners. And More wives. excuses? <laughs> yeah, I think sometimes it's an excuse. I oh. try I try my best to always try to make time for my friends. You wait, you get married. Uh, there, 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 there is no try. <laughs> It's either you make time for them or you don't. Which Yoda. means that your friendships <laughs> fall under very low on the priority list. Lo. That's mm. what I'm guessing. 
Actually, what a subtle sign of someone being a shit friend is that you notice that in a friend group, right, when other people are talking, you can tell that they're super interested. But then it's like when you say something, then you almost always get brushed off or their attention is always like, like their back always towards you. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then that is like a subtle sign that actually, right, this person don't really care about you. I've been the receiving end of that. Like, I met friends, friends, who like, <laughs> hey, don't like them. who like, kind of skip me or like, skip you, like, like your turn, your turn, then, yeah, your turn. Yeah, you know, sometimes we will talk, 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 talk halfway, right? We're like, we'll share, make rounds and have conversation. And then like, when so it structured. comes to me, or, <laughs> they will have some, someone will say something else, then they're like, like segue into another conversation, right? Then you forget. Okay. Then like, and but it happens to me all the time. And because of this experience, right? I've learned to be the friend for the people, the person who's left out in the group. Mm. So like, say four of us talking, right? All three of us talking. But then Jared like trying to say something, but no one Me. respond to him. Mm. So I will talk to him. So what do you say just now? What do you think? Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> what yeah. I always try to be is that I try to bring the person back into the conversation by like making a joke or like I was say like, eh, that time so and so so like that. I know that. now so and so get to tell the story. Mm, yeah. I noticed that about you. Thank you. And I appreciate Everybody, that. Slide into my friend's DMs. <laughs> I also think that it's important that you know how to command attention. Everybody's life interesting, right? Everybody's life unique. Correct. All got stories. But whether you can tell those stories and tell it well makes a massive difference. I just Whoa. had this conversation <laughs> with Deanna, my best friend. So it was after like cell group, right? Then like we share a cap on the way home. Then mm. after that, she wanted to tell me what she caught from cell group. But this was after like four hours of like socialising already. <laughs> then tired. she's telling the story and then she's like she stutter, then like she say three words, right? Then she pause and think what she want to say next. Then she think, think, think. Then in my head, it's like, oh my God, like I hope she like quickly get on with the story. Like I'm a bit falling asleep, you know? Yeah. Mm. Then I feel a bit bad because <laughs> this is my best friend, ma, telling me about something that she cares deeply about. Then yeah. how do I suddenly go like, oh, can you speak up? No, so what I do for that, right, is to summarize again. Oh, so did you mean this happened, this happened, and this happened? No, but then... she haven't get to telling me what happened yet. Huh? We reached home already, she barely told me like one story. Eh. So patience, eh? It's a, it's a very valuable trait. To, no, like, I think sometimes it's a matter of prompting or mm. being extremely honest after the fact. Uh, because that's what I did. in the middle of the story, <laughs> if the middle of the story, you try to tell her, hey, I'm your not storytelling getting... suck, I cannot yeah. be bored. Bo you're boring me, i zoning out. <laughs> right? it's, the, you, it's conflict. But both piano start already, finish. La. Finish already, then... Later on, then you can say like, actually, your storytelling right, can improve. Then you give her some tricks. <laughs> okay, so to close up my story, what I figured in the end was that she is still also processing her thoughts. And in a sense, like she was trying to use me as like a... Ah, to a think out loud. Yeah, yeah, thinking out loud mm, kind of thing. So, that I, yeah, so I was just very honest about it in, by saying, actually, I'm very tired already because we <laughs> spent so much time. And then that day, we also had our special guest, which took a lot of energy out from me, right? Oh, which one? So, uh, TV. <laughs> okay, so uh. I just said like, uh, like, I want to be able to respond to you properly. Can we talk about this tomorrow? Because yeah. ah. I'm not in the... Mode the that zone. I can in I can ingest any more information already. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. At, at least oh. at least your friend um just speaks slow. Then have you met people who cannot speak in PEL format? P <laughs> Most people cannot. <laughs> I cannot. There's a TikTok about this. <laughs> <laughs> What's PEL again? Point, Point elaboration, ex example, example. Eh? and link. Oh. The L oh. always missing. <laughs> that was always missing. Now, like, what's the part of this story? As of now, we've established that there is one core <laughs> component to what makes bad friends and that is communicate, poor communication. Do we have another solid one that is not I was based on communication? I think a bad friend is someone who, despite knowing what you value, decides to ignore or go against it. So for example, I value money. So if my friend borrows money from me, I expect them to pay me back without me asking. Can I just add on to that yeah. also? It's not just about returning you, but if they cannot, yeah, they will let, let me know. you know. Let, let you know. know. Mm. Yeah, update yeah. you mm. about it. So another example is if I value time and being on time mm. and my friend, right, uh, is constantly late or like late coming become their part of their personality. Like, sorry, I'm oh. late. You know, like, oh, <laughs> oh. then I tell you already. <laughs> then you still like that, right? Then I will drift from that person. The bad friend to me. I think the pattern, right? Mm. The repetition, right? Is the problem. Because if the person doesn't want to help themselves or help the situation, then there's, no, it doesn't matter how many times you say one. Ma. Uh huh. So, once you identify that this person choo is consciously choosing yeah the negative choice over the positive choice, then you have to confront whether that is a reflection of how much this person values your friendship or not. Okay, specifically when it comes to money, right? I think the general rule of thumb is that a lot of old people, the uncle, take taxi always tell yeah, me, right? Yeah. That <laughs> whenever, if you want to lend money to a friend, right? 
you just assume the money is gone. Assume that it is money that you are giving to your friend, not that you are lending them. First of mentality for investments. <laughs> <laughs> the red flag to me is not borrowing money. The red flag is after you borrow money, right? While you still owe me money, what is the lifestyle you are living? Like there are some friends that borrow from me is I know, right? They wouldn't let down that pride or ego, right? To come and ask me for money, right? Is they really going through something? Right? So mm. most of the time I give them after that, I just let them pay me back in their own time. Lah. Then... But what I sometimes get a bit salty about, right, is I notice like, oh, they, they keep going overseas. Mm. Or like, wherever they go, it's like clubbing or like expensive dinners or this kind of thing. While not updating me about the situation. Yeah. Mm, then yeah. that to me feels like they took it for granted. Law, and that is the red flag. So then do you establish like a, a payment plan? Why my voice well, how do, <laughs> But how do you do that uh, without offending the friend? It should actually be established at the very start of no, like so, when you're yeah. lending the money. So if somebody wants to borrow money from me, right, the first thing is why? What's the situation? Mm. And then how long are you going to need to pay me back? Mm. Like how long you need to borrow this money for? I mean, this seems to be like a very, very common thing because I actually found a story from like Reddit three weeks ago. And then I put it in, Ooh, in my script, right? But then right before this episode, right, another one shows up. So oh, it's shit. like five it, days it, ago. <laughs> yeah, five days ago. People like just complaining, like, oh, I lend money to my best friend, uh, like three hundred dollars only. And then when I ask them for the money back, they just say, I'll pay you back. And then they, they just never do. And it so just keeps rolling on, rolling on and rolling no, on. No, but are they on. still in their life or not? Yes. As in they are asking for advice of like what should I do? Like? If you fear that you're gonna lose your friendship over three hundred dollars, their friendship is not worth keeping. Regardless. Oh, do you reply but, this guy? <laughs> but I think one indication of whether or not you should lend this person money is whether you believe this person will be in your life for like, you know what I mean? Forever kind. But they also cannot tell one ma. I think there are some people that you know will be in your life forever. And you should be very selective of this number of people. For the rest, right? Then say no lah. If you cannot bear to, like like what Denise mentioned earlier, right? Mm. This money I is written off kind. Mm-hmm. If you cannot bear to write it off, then don't lend lah. Well, I think this is the perfect time to talk about the sponsors for this episode. <laughs> Sponsor? Uh-huh. This episode is sponsored. <laughs> yes. Wow. <laughs> so this episode is sponsored by Trust Bank. Have oh, you guys I heard use, of them? I use that. <laughs> NTUC. Yeah, it's, oh, a, it's, yes. a, it's a new bank, right? Yeah. So Trust Bank is actually Singapore's first digital bank. And oh. Sherms, you are right. It's a collaboration. Oh, you mean like I cannot find a physical? No, they're oh. only in the cloud. In the web. In, in the web. Yeah. It's a collaboration between uh, Standard <laughs> Charter and FairPrice Group. Can trust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Trust Bank has this trust instant loan and what it does is it allows you to convert a portion of your trust credit card's credit balance into cash. Wait, what is credit balance? Like what? the amount that you... My credit have. limit. Yeah, your credit, credit limit. Oh. Yeah, into cash. So this trust instant loan offers a low interest rate of 2.87% per annum and loans can be approved in as fast as 60 seconds. No way. You think I can sign up for a loan right now? <laughs> I just borrow ten dollars. No, you have to set out the credit card. First. <laughs> oh. I have a credit card. <laughs> hey, you, can you borrow yeah, ten dollars right now? Later. Shut up, sir. <laughs> so repayment terms are flexible and can be anywhere from three months to sixty months. Oh, sixty wow. months. That's like to twelve pay $10. Five, eh, five years. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't realize it'd be that long. Eh. So if you have like a big ticket purchase coming up, like say a wedding like shows or renovation wow. also like, like shows, shows. <laughs> yeah. like guys. this could be a solution that you explore in order to kind of mm. pay that like. yeah he did, I don't know if it's related to this the instant loan one right but trust bank I, I, I tell you all first this is the I give, L, I give alpha okay trust bank right is so good right you use it for your overseas trip as a credit card Why, yeah? because oh it's, it's multi-currency also yeah because it's 0% uh, you don't need to top up unlike huh? other cards oh, everything all the fees all right, rubbish fees right all 0% zero. zero. <laughs> rubbish fees yeah. right and the exchange rate okay yeah google as in it's ah, tied according to, to okay okay yeah. okay right google. so what you see is what you get Damn. when you google yeah, you don't need to top up unlike other cards correct of oh, course it's a credit card mm. so I've been using it to go like Malaysia la, New Zealand all like tap 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 <laughs> Oh, you got a lot of trades. You got a lot of money, is it? Don't have. <laughs> well, time. maybe I can trust you in a <laughs> trust instant loan. Okay, so back to red flags. There was one that I identified, which is people who make you feel bad for setting limits or having boundaries. It's so, for example, if I say like, oh, what is a boundary? I don't have boundaries. Okay. <laughs> As in like, to make you feel like, hey, like why you cannot go out? That kind of thing. 
you know, then uh, make you feel shitty about having certain personal limits. Mm. Then that's right. a shitty friend. Like when you go out for drinks, hey, why you drink so little? Drink some more. Mm, why peer drink? pressure, yeah. that kind. Yeah. To me, la, before this episode, it seemed like boundaries is a very flighty kind of definition. But what I actually found online, right, mm. is that there are actually seven types of boundaries. No way. Yeah. <laughs> material boundaries huh? is like how much in terms of like material goods are you willing to share with other people? Can I borrow yeah. your Lamborghini? No. Mm. Oh. What is your boundary oh. for that? Yeah. Conversational boundaries. So the topics that you are comfortable uh, talking about with uh, other people. Oh. Uh. So ah, okay. like for me, it would be politics. I don't like talking about politics. How do you know? Because your friends, right? Are the people that are supposed to push you uh, beyond your boundaries. I'm not be an echo chamber. To help you to grow. So you don't just stay the same person for the rest of your life. Okay, I think it could be the case that if your friend got some like past trauma or what, right? So I'm just not comfortable about sexual content lah. Yeah. But I friends are supposed to push. <laughs> no, I think there are healthy ways to test boundaries I and see. then there are unhealthy ways to test boundaries. Okay? Okay, for example, there are certain wars that go on, right? That, yeah. I mean like, it can be very divided opinions. If the topic gets brought up and then for me to on the spot say, guys, I think we shouldn't talk about this really. Mm. Like, isn't that a bit like sensitive? Figure out what's the point. What's the point of talking about it? Because the reason why you're uncomfortable about it is for whatever reason. Ma. So if you can tie it together, then maybe you can figure out why. Uh, figure out like, what's the reason why you shouldn't really be talking about it also. Because that could be why you're articulating. For example, if you want to talk about a war, where you don't really fully understand the nuance, or you think that you guys having this conversation now is just repetitive, or it will lead nowhere, or blah, 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 then... Guys, we are talking in circles already. I think we should move on. La, like possibly, move on. possibly. Right, yeah. Physical boundaries. So, the body space that you are willing to... <laughs> yeah, how, don't touch me. How, Is it? Sure. Okay, can. Yeah, Next. So, <laughs> time boundaries. How much time you are willing to give a thought to other people. Yeah. Did, 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 did. Okay, our time is up. Next. Pretty much. Internal boundaries, something similar <laughs> of how much energy you are willing to expend. So, it could be a, a very short amount of time. But then, uh. if you are... Do, if you are sp- uh, expending a lot of like social energy that could be your boundary also like you a mean, quickie uh, or a you long mean then I just sweaty say, session sorry, <laughs> sorry my internal energy is spent I just get up and go home my social battery la. No, yeah, honestly, you have yeah. to set the boundary yeah. that you do have a social battery no, and there may be a point in time where I might not be feeling it's it like just I now, might want to go home it's like just now you say um, you were in the car with your best friend right and then she want to continue talking but then you're mm. kind of drained already it's fine to say like honestly I'm drained socially. I'm a bit tired. Maybe you can talk about this another time. So you were setting yeah. boundary. Because oh. I, I also do that sometimes. It is quite tied yeah. to social battery, I think. How is that different from the next one, which is <laughs> mental boundaries? Uh, mental boundary <laughs> is uh, how... You see uh, No. <laughs> <laughs> it's how much you allow someone else to have their own opinions. Not at all. So like uh, having talking about? a very low boundary. <laughs> from so if you're open-minded, your boundaries are larger. Yeah. In terms of oh. like, yeah, worldview of like, oh. you are willing to take other people's opinions. That means opinions like, you, you and your friends can believe in the totally totally opposite. Yeah. But you still can be friends. Mm. Agree I to disagree. Yeah. Okay, okay. Mental boundaries. And last one, emotional boundary. Uh, how much emotional energy you're willing to give Wait, and then emotional is different from internal. Internal is your social energy. I think emotional is like how how heavy it, oh, it, it can be. Like. So there okay. are some examples from this thing and it's a circle, so I have to turn my head. Uh. So emotional, an example is as much as I want to support you right now, I do not have the emotional capacity. Yep, yep, but yep. then like for internal, it is, oh, it's back here. I have been social all week. I need the weekend to myself to oh, recharge. Right. I can see the nuance in it. Uh. No, so jo- just now, John Paul mentioned about how like you should have friends that push you out of your comfort uh, zone and all that, right? Yeah. But how do I identify, right? What is a positive peer pressure and what is like, bad friends, you know? It all seems to tie back to whether this person and you, right, are matured enough to navigate the complexity of these kind of situations. Because if you cannot, right, it doesn't matter who you're talking to. It doesn't matter what you're talking about also. But there's a lot of times where, like, people are at different levels of maturity, ma. So even if I'm there, how do I help my friend get there? But at the same time, not feel like I'm responsible (laughs) for their actions or how they feel. You are never responsible for an individual, but the, what is what this the what this thing between the, get, the two of you mm. is what you're responsible for, uh-huh. and that is what you should be contributing to 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 to, to stabilize or, or support or grow. But what hurts or helps your friendship is then what needs to be communicated. No, but you see, right? Hurt, right? Hurt is completely subjective. <laughs> no, it's it's a <laughs> choice. You chose to be hurt. Everything mm. that I'm saying and trying to do here is for a positive intention. Okay? okay, so when I tell you something, even though it may be hurtful, 
It's because I'm trying, there's a problem here that I'm trying to solve because it's hurting the friendship and I want to and I want to keep the friendship and I care. That's why I'm telling you this. So then now, right, it falls on you. I can try my best to deliver the message as gently as possible. But even then, right, then my, I'm not perfect or so. Right? Mm. And if you end up getting hurt by my words, which most likely you would, are you going to take that hurt, right, and feed it? Or I, can you recognize that that hurt is just a part of this process of growing and healing? And if you cannot, right, you take it personally, then that's on you already. It low-key sounds manipulative. A little bit. Why? It's like, I'm telling you that I trust me. This is all for the good for our friendship and everything. Mm. I'm, I, what I, whatever I'm going to say next, right, it's all because I care about all this friendship and well, you as a friend, right? Then, but then I say all the mean stuff. Okay, not mean not stuff. Mean like the love. problems that I feel that we, are, we have in our friendship. Then... If you feel hurt, then that's your problem. No, I think it opens up a dialogue Feels at like the very least so that you have the space to talk about it and you can provide your own point of view if you want to. Right? And yeah. I like, say, this is my point of view. So, And that's where the conversation hopefully meets in the middle. Yeah. So I think resolve. that's what John Paul's point is in, in that the boy Maturity. is now in your court. Yeah. The boy is now in your court. So if you feel that whatever he is saying right, is mm. not true and that this is his point of view where maybe he's mm. making certain false assumptions or what. Right. Right? So there's a space for me to like, tell Correct. him like, mm. Clarify. I don't agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I do okay. think there is some maturity in also knowing when like a relationship or a friendship just isn't adding value to your life anymore. Yes. And I think that sometimes it takes maturity to walk away from a friendship if it's not doing anything for you. So if you want to try and engage and then you realise that you're hitting a brick wall and you don't want to continue on this, taking out way too much, then be like my friend. Uh, walk away. Lor. My ex-friend. <laughs> yeah. But I'm wondering if there's an imbalance in terms of like if you are able to articulate your ideas better. Yeah, compared to the other person yes. and then they feel oh. like I have it all in my head but I don't know how to tell you and then it comes out and then it doesn't come out as effectively and then there's kind of a imbalance in terms of like the what's communicated la. Yeah. and then I think that might cause a problem and it's the onus on the person with bad communication to improve their communication mm -hmm. or mm, Yes, but I think it's also your ability to understand the, the relationships that you have and the people that you have relationship with, right? Mm -hmm. Your relationship, right, for the most part, <laughs> is a very long journey. Mm. Yes. And so, given that long journey, you're not going to resolve everything with one conversation. It's mm. a constant conversation. So there will be times where maybe, sure, like say Shams in the heat of the moment, right? Maybe mm. she just get hit with all this information. She needs time to process, blah, blah, mm. blah, blah. Maybe she can address certain things now but maybe there are others that she cannot and she should be able to articulate that at least and then I should be able to understand and maybe the next day or maybe a week later she, where she has gathered her thoughts and she has processed and she now knows how she wants to respond already then she does in the way that she wants to and we continue that conversation mm. but it's healthy this way you see mm. it's and not this time like I want everything the one of, now that yeah. kind of like yeah. Yeah. yeah and I think like if the person that is pointing out certain issues that they spot right is mm. actually well-meaning I think they will try to clarify with you what you're trying to say. So mm. like, is this what you're trying to say? And then if you're not, then you all try to work towards like what is actually uh, your thought process. Lor. But what if you go start going in circles? Because you don't, that person cannot articulate himself. No, then you need a word. break. Then you need a time apart to like think things Let through. Them, yeah. But that like, person wants to resolve it now. Huh? No, 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 that, no, no, that is a little bit immature. Yeah. yeah. Because right, the, there are times where, there are times where like, I've had a conversation like with, with like, some friends, right? And then, it gets heated. Eh. Mm. Like them heated because we, we are trying to, why why you think this way about yeah. uh, about life? Then why I think so differently about life? That cannot be what? Mm. Nobody will think that way. Yeah. Then we, then we, uh, then we it get quite heated, right? Then two days later, right? We, I, I, I can't remember what I said, uh, but I wrote out something or we revisited the conversation but mm. less heated, especially with that one main person. Uh. Then <laughs> when we revisited it, right? I tried to, use an analogy to rephrase what, I, what was, where I was coming from. Yeah. And I use an analogy to also articulate how I think he understands this, mm. um, this, this, this issue. Mm. Then from there, right, he suddenly was like, Open up. Oh, oh. now I see how you interpreted what I said and mm. that's not what I meant. Mm. Then he proceeds to clarify it and then, right, all problems solved. <laughs> oh, no so problem. So you should really, no, it's damn satisfying when stuff like that happens. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it, we needed time. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And nobody felt good. After that first conversation, right? Nobody felt good about it. It was like, yeah. it was sad that we couldn't come to the, 
see eye to eye also. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, but when we finally got there later on, right? And we could address it calmly or that and, you know, just take some time to process all that. Wow. Power. Yeah, you sound super like this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that's it for today. We went a bit deeper than I thought we would, but this episode was brought to you by Trust Bank. And for more information on Trust Instant Loan, you can head down over to the links below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Let's all bye. tickle that notification bell so you don't miss an episode. Bye bye. <laughs> When you're hanging out with your friends, right? This one have to go. I yes! Like Very important! <laughs> put it the f*** away. It's not just putting it on silent mode, not just flipping it downwards like that. No, not, out not of sight. Out of sight. Oh. Then, that person you're talking to, right, will feel heard and seen. Yeah. And they will represent. Uh, rep- Do not disturb yourself. function. I just learned. Let's see, okay. Quite effective. No, you know there are focus that modes. Are... No, my focus and it must go to do not disturb. Wow. Yeah. You know I have to bring water bottle right? like... <laughs> <laughs> Every time you meet a friend is one eye. <laughs> <laughs> Please, yeah. so rich.